<laughs> yeah, we get this every single time. Um, anyway, <laughs> thank you all for, for being here and at this uh, second uh, virtual event um, with the BCC, the Big Canopy Camp Out. Um, I mean, I'm not going to say too much because I already gave a whole introduction yesterday. Just know that one of the BCC organizers is here. I don't know where she is on your screen. Big I'm P. Here. Well, that's <laughs> Nadia as a running for organizer. <laughs> Vicky is the big canopy camp out for organizer. So if you, she's waving. So if you want to talk to her, then. Uh, Not yeah. me. I was waving to you, Vicky. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> <"Hey, it's laughs> <there too." laughs> <laughs> Maybe Nadia did the same thing. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you don't know what's going on on Zoom. It's a very different experience. Um, I do hope you all enjoy it, though. So kind of without further ado, I'm going to introduce Harv. So Harv is um, from Colorado. He's been a really long time tree climber and he's been with the GUTC for a very long time. Um, I think he has prepared many, many talks <laughs> in the past in his life about uh, recreational tree climbing and tree climbing in general. So he's going to talk a little bit about the history of tree climbing. Um, I think a little bit, I don't know, but like the benefits of tree climbing and I think there's even more. So, um, so let's, uh, I think we can like start. Okay. Uh, well, first let me tell you about myself. Um, I am Harv Teitelbaum, as Griette uh, accurately said. I am the, um, I was the founding president of the GOTC, which is gotreeclimbing.org, uh, or Global Organization of Tree Climbers. You can find us on gotreeclimbing.org uh, online. Um, and uh, now I guess my title is President Emeritus. Um, beyond that, I do a lot of environmental work um, here in the United States. I'm on the boards of uh, uh, PSR Colorado, which is Physicians for Social Responsibility. I'm on the board of Colorado Rising. I'm on the board of Environmental Health Project out of Pennsylvania. I work with the Sierra Club. And I do stuff like that. Uh, but uh, as far as tree climbing goes, I have been tree climbing for about 20 years. Um, and um, yeah, I got into it uh, actually right after 9-11 happened. I, 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 was working, uh, I was working for a uh, soil conservation district and I decided I needed to get more, more involved with uh, being outdoors. So um, that's uh, a little bit about me. And let's see if I can get this uh a little better okay we might skip through some of these as we go but um, these are just some pictures of tree climbing that's uh, uh nicole there climbing in chile and then nicole's a friend so we'll go through some of these so what is recreational tree climbing um a recreational tree climbing or rtc uses ropes saddles and techniques proven safe for both climber and tree to ascend into the, the crowns of trees and the canopies of forests for recreation, exploration, exhilaration, education, exercise, and just for plain old fun. Um, the focus, I like to think, and other people who really do it recreationally, we like to think that the focus is on the tree and the forest and not on our own selves, on maximizing our own, you know, uh, thrill-seeking adventure. Um, or as the, uh, the environmental writer, writer Edward Abbey used to call the other kind of uh, experience, he used to call it industrial recreation. Uh, that is not what we do. Um, we are uh, part of being in the tree and in the forest. It's not all about us. Uh, there are some trees. The, these pictures were taken in either uh, Chile or Colorado for the most part. Although I think there's a, there might be a picture that Paul uh, from uh, Goodleaf Tree Climbing might be in here somewhere. Um, so what are the evolutionary connections? Why do we feel so attached to being up in trees? Um, this is from um, evolutionary biologist Donald Perry, um, whose uh, tree name is Canopy, uh, Canopy Don, I think is his tree name. Uh, but the research shows that all species that menstruate overtly are arboreal. Um, 
Modern human hands, fingers, and feet are actually well adapted for tree climbing. Human infants retain both the parachuting and the moro reflexes. When infants fall, they spread out their arms instead of drawing themselves in. So there are some evolutionary reasons why that are um, uh, in evidence or indications that we came from the trees. Uh, human children are able to climb and walk about the same time and newborns can support their entire body weight hanging from their hands. So at least according to Donald Perry, humans are scant soil that were uh, adapted to both the terrestrial and the arboreal worlds, the, the ground-based and the, the tree world. Uh, so we, 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 we come from trees and that's why when people climb, they feel a connection, uh, a, a safety, they feel something primitive and foundational, like they're returning home almost when they get back up in the trees. Uh, that's me up in a 500 year old Ponderosa that I named uh, Nameless, by the way, because I just couldn't, it was so beyond description, I just couldn't think of a name, so I named it Nameless. Um, and just up there. So what are some of the benefits for people, the psychological benefits? There have been lots of studies done in Japan uh, by a friend of ours, John Gathright, who runs tree, tree Climbing Japan, and also at Kyoto University. And what they found was that um, climbers were found to be more relaxed, yet more invigorated, reduced levels of tension, reduced levels of confusion and fatigue. Tree climbing activities enhanced social and communal relationships and optimized local restoration and conservation initiatives. And we've all heard, or most of us have heard the phrase Shinrin Yoku, which mean, uh, means forest bathing. Um, and it's a phrase for that being among trees and forests has a noticeable effect on stress levels, uh, reducing measured levels of hostility and depression. Um, and that's, uh, this is a tree in, in Chile and people are just uh, enjoying the tree. Um, this is a cottonwood in Colorado. Uh, what are some of the, uh, the benefits, the physical benefits for people? Well, uh, one of the major one is, is just getting exercise. Just by, it's not, you know, many of us exercise, we work out, but this is exercise by doing things, by, rec by recreating. Um, and obesity, at least in the U.S., has been a major, a major uh, problem. Uh, I won't go over the statistics, but uh, obesity has increased uh, by uh, large percentages over the recent, recent decades. Um, more than in 2010, more than one third of children and adolescents in the U.S. were overweight or obese. Um, so obesity can lead to high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, um, all these um, bad physical conditions and psychological effects such as low self-esteem, negative body image, and depression. Um, and uh, can lead to higher rates of, uh, higher death rates, um, um, suicides, low self-esteem. So this is an interesting quote uh, from a, a, a kid in elementary school. He says he likes to play indoors because that's where the electrical outlets are so we can plug in his devices. So that's kind of a sad commentary on, uh, on the state of things. So it's, we want to get people outdoors. We want to get uh, kids and adolescents outdoors. We want to get them playing. Uh, this is a green ash in Longmont, Colorado. We call this tree the, the Jolly Green Giant. It's a nice big uh, ash tree. Um, this is a, uh, a cottonwood in Colorado group of Girl Scouts. So all together, I put together this, this little picture here. It's in the shape of a tree in case you didn't recognize it. Um, but these are some of the things that uh, the benefits of tree climbing. It has lots of benefits and more than anything, it's fun. So it's nature's way of telling us that this is good for you because it's, it's fun. It's fun to do outdoors. Um, we, that's Nicole. Um, this is cinnamon. This is a little, we, we use these little stuffed teddy bears when we're, de we're at a conference and we want to demonstrate uh, the system that we use for climbing. So we'll put uh, cinnamon here. Uh, we have another stuffed, uh, I don't know if I have, 
We have another one named Madison that I have around here somewhere uh, that we also put in, 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 a, uh, in gear uh, to show how the system works. And so history, let's talk about the history of, of recreational tree climbing as a sport. So where one of the, the important dates that I, I like to point out is that 1974, uh, Donald Perry, the person we, uh, who I, I refer to on the evolutionary history, um, he was doing his um, doctoral research and he was in Costa Rica, Costa Rica and he realized that he could use rock climbing techniques to access the canopy. Um, and so he did. The place that he, he did this is a, an eco resort now called Rara Avis uh, that, you know, in a weird sort of confluence of history, uh, was formed, uh, was started by a friend of mine from high school named Amos, Amos Bean, started this eco resort and it turns out that Donald Perry was there in 1974 uh, doing climbing. Some of his equipment is still around the area. If you're lucky enough to go there, you can see some of his original stuff. Um, but he is also credited with uh, developing the zip line. Uh, Donald Perry, and he also his latest thing is something called an eco tram, which is a self-propelled uh, tram that goes through the the canopy. Um, anyway, so that's Donald Perry, and that's an old picture of him. Um, okay. Now, in 1983, an arborist by the name of Peter Jenkins uh, wanted to share his love of trees and tree climbing with others, so he modified his equipment and he started taking people up into the trees as just a, uh, a recreational activity. And he, along with a couple of other people like uh, Abe Winters and Genevieve Summers, Joe and Bill Mayer, uh, some of, the, uh, some of the, the people down there in Georgia, they started to put together guidelines uh, for how to conduct uh, safe recreational tree climbing. And he started the first climbing school uh, Tree Climbers International, and now there are schools all over the uh, all over the world. There's a I mentioned Tree Climbing Japan, which is John Gathright's. Uh, I do uh, Tree Climbing Colorado. Um, here in Colorado, there's a uh, Tree Climbing Italy. There's a uh, Good Leaf tree, tree Climbing on the Isle of Wight in England. Um, Paul does that one. Uh, and another date, another important date for recreational tree climbing, 2007, uh, in Jamestown, we, we hold these annual recreational tree climbing rendezvous. Uh, the next one in person is going to be, I believe, in April 2022 in Florida. And on this call is Nadia, who is the, uh, the host of that, uh, that rendezvous. But in 2007, we held a rendezvous uh, in Colorado and we had all the or most of the uh, recognized facilitators and instructors in recreational tree climbing. And we all came together and we decided to form a charitable nonprofit for the purpose of establishing guidelines, um, sharing information, spreading safe recreational tree climbing, um, providing resources for for just people who wanted to climb and for others around the world. So we started something that became the GOTC, Global Organization of Tree Climbers, and that was 2007. And that's a picture of Abe. Uh, Abe was, um, um, along, with, along with me, we were the co-founders of the, the GOTC. Um, and uh, Abe's a great guy and uh, kind of the Santa Claus of tree climbing. And his tree name is I, which means uh, sloth, because he's very slothful when he, when he climbs. He usually just climbs to the first branch and then goes to sleep. So that's, that's how uh, Abe climbs. Um, so that's about, I think, all we want to cover here on, um, on this. And so let me stop, stop sharing. And I'll just... Uh, you know, open the floor if people want to make comments or have any questions or, or rail at the presentation or, you know, criticism, whatever you want to say, um, let's open up the floor. Yeah, so we, we still, you actually um, 
do this much faster than I expected. <laughs> 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 so I am like like the opposite. For me, it always takes much longer um, to present something. So yeah, we have plenty of time for questions. Um, and then after that, because we are uh, with more people, we can definitely break up in some smaller groups and get some conversations going. So you get to know other people more. That's sometimes easier to do in smaller groups. Um, so yeah, let's have some questions. And I have some other I have some other videos I can show too, some short little clips. So, you know, okay. we won't be stuck for time. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have a question, uh, Hob. You mentioned Don Perry, and this is a book that came out, his first book. And I appreciate you making the connection between me and him that yeah, I could have him at the Costa Rica rendezvous. And maybe oh. that was in your slide, but was there was, was there a second book actually published of his in a, in a, in a physical form? Um, I don't know. And I sh yeah, I should mention that um, Eric um, did a rendezvous in, uh, in Costa Rica that, um, that Donald was the feature, featured speaker at. And uh, uh, yeah, now I don't know if he had another book. I know he's written articles because I have, uh, he's asked me to edit uh, an article uh -huh. or two that he's written. Uh, but as far as books, I know that the book, uh, The Medicine Man, there's, there's in the movie, there was a movie called The Medicine Man. Um, I think it was about, uh, they discovered some, they thought is they discovered a cure for cancer in, in, uh, in the flora in, in some South American country. And then they came back and it had all been developed and plowed over and it was all gone. Um, anyway, he has some connection to that. I don't know if he wrote that book or it was about him, uh, but there's, there's some connection to that story. Yeah, I think he was at least he was a consultant on making the movie, and he was he was happy he was played by Sean Connery. <laughs> but what he told me at the time, a few years ago now, is that he he was working on a, a book on 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 the human evolution related to trees, but it was still a work in progress, and it was gonna it was published online, but not by a publisher. But yeah, I gotta do a search and find that. So yeah, I, I think. I am trying to do a search. I cannot find it so far. Oh, let me go to his LinkedIn. Well, we did do <laughs> on, on the GOTC site, on the website, uh, we did run, uh, he wrote out, uh, it was like a small, a small paper that we published in two sections. Does anybody remember that? Yep. Uh, that, that we had published on the GOTC website. Yeah, it's point. still on there, I think. Oh, it is? Okay. So it's still on there. And it's about that same top subject you were talking about, Eric. It's about evolutionary biology and humans' connections to trees and being up in trees. It's very interesting. It's a very interesting article. Um, I don't know if you if you find the link to that, maybe you could post it in the chat. Right. I will do some searching. Are there any other questions? I don't have a question, but while you're searching, uh, since we have some. Uh, new people here that were not in yesterday's uh, talks. If anybody has any question about uh, next year's 2022 rendezvous in Florida, uh, please feel free to ask me. I'm here to answer questions. What part of Florida is it in? It's uh, south of Gainesville, Florida, so north central Florida. And what types of trees do they have in that part of Florida? Uh, the area we're going to be concentrated in has uh, live oaks, the big old grandiose Florida live oaks. Uh, so that's the area we're going to be uh, camping in. I mean, not camping, but climbing. There's different camping areas as well as hotels and rooms and it's a whole variety of accommodations. Where are you based out of, David? I'm in Northern California, and I, I just want to let everyone know I'm at work. I'm a hungry leaf worker, and I'm uh, in the middle of my day, and I just saw the Eastern time, so I thought, oh, perfect. I have a little bit of mo a moment, so I have to jump off er early for something, but I just wanted to say something about all of you. So I'm new to recreational tree climbing. I climb five days a week after work while there's still sunlight. I jet home and wow just say to my wife, I'm going to just go climb for like an hour and I'll go find an oak tree or whatever. And maybe I'll just go up over and down, pack up and go home. And you know, that's it. Just enough to just get that space. But I just wanted to say, and I've written this on uh, a couple of different websites and forums. You're the most generous people 
Like it's, it's, I, you know, I don't know if you've done new things in your life, but like, I'm totally new to this. I'm a foreigner in this crowd. I don't know anybody. I show up alone. Um, but you're so welcoming and there's no flaming and the same question over and over comes up. Nobody jumps on anybody. It's, it's a remarkable group of people. And, um, who would have known, you know, I just stumbled into it and, uh, it's just lovely to be associated with all of you. I've, I've yet to meet a bad individual and I'm told they're out there, but I've yet to meet them. We'll, we'll, go, we'll go introduce them to you. Today. Yes, we'll uh, find well, them. Welcome, David. And uh, yeah. are you are you a member of GOTC? Do you get the newsletter? And I, I believe I, Eric. I've met Eric over in Berkeley, and okay. uh, I then joined after I met him. So I'm I'm on something. Yeah. Okay. So you will be hearing about updates about the Florida rendezvous, and we love to meet you. Uh, it is uh, a very friendly crowd. Yes. That's why I'm here. It's been five years of meeting a lot of friendly people. And now I'm hosting the next event. And uh, if you can make it to Florida, we'd love to have you. I'll see you in Florida. As you, as you can tell, Nadia is, is, is great with promotion, promotional stuff, <laughs> promoting stuff. You know, David, the, uh, I got to tell you a little story. Uh, when I first got into this, um, uh, you know, I, I saw something on TV about recreational tree climbing. I said, I, I got to do this. So I called up Peter Jenkins uh, and I said, uh, Peter, would, uh, would you train me? And he said, sure, but you also there, I want you to consider there are some other people who train as well as, as I do, and they're different sort of people. So you should talk to them as well. And it occurred to me, what kind of a business is this that, you know, like a potential customer calls you up and you refer them to what, who may be your competition in the same area. Say, oh, check these other people out. You know, you might like them or they might be your better your style. And that really struck me uh, as, as that openness thing that they would be open to uh, having people see just different people to go train with, with other people and not, not yourself. So that was right from the, from the start. I had that same impression that you did about the community. Yeah, it's lovely. I, I'm just I, I I I've written to this on these forums that people ask me. You know, I love to say this is what I'm doing now because it's so intriguing. But right after I say I'm into recreational tree climbing, the next thing that comes out of my mouth is the community. Like the next thing I start to talk about is the people, which is just ironic, right? It's it's not the thrill seeking. It's not the it's it's just really nice people just doing something that is really enjoyable and beneficial and it's it's good it's good and, I, and I'm, I'm not some softy so it's uh it just struck it strikes me that way that's yeah very nice i think we're very happy about that i mean i am <laughs> so yeah do you normally climb like because if you go climbing every day and you say you just kind of like do this after work what is your preferred climbing system you like climb doubled rope and just uh I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm, I'm a both feet in kind of guy. I'm doing it all. Like I have, okay. I'm doing it all. And I, I, I go online, the forums, I look at, I watch all these videos. I look at techniques. I go try to employ one. I'm in the type of climbing where I go. I, I'm in Northern California, just North of San Francisco by uh, 30 miles. So we have all these beautiful hills and I just mm -hmm. will walk around, hike in the hills and just find trees, you know, just, right. and, and just kind of do a little bit of, uh, undercover undercover climbing which i'm sure everybody here has done yes <laughs> especially in california <laughs> yes yes does anyone else have uh, experiences or comments they want to share well i can share one undercover climbing experience from marine county uh joyce do you want to weigh in on this do you remember what i'm talking about anyway joyce and i and some other people were were uh, chased out of a tree by a Marin County Sheriff deputy that was very upset. So, but we had, we got in a, a good long climb before he found us. So when I started tree climbing, I started tree climbing with, on, with one of the people that um, also was involved with the GTC from the beginning. And, you know, it's one of those first recreational tree climbers and instructors. I mean, he, he passed away, so his name is Joe Mayer. Um, and he, so we would ask him a lot, like, okay, so where do we go tree climbing? Once you know how to, how to climb trees. And he was like, it doesn't matter. There's just tell people like, 
there's no written rule that you cannot climb trees unless it's for example sequoias there are kind of rules but like there's no written rule so just tell to the park ranger to like look up the rule and if they can find it then they can find you and then they would never find it so at least the first time you would get away with it that's yeah. what he would tell us <laughs> so i was like okay <laughs> we'll see what yeah, it goes sure. yeah but yeah i've i've never been um chased out of an area so but also very good at undercover tree climbing. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, when you get excited and start yelling and screaming, that's a problem. Right. So, uh, David, I'm sure you know Roy's Woods in uh, in Marin County? Yes. Yeah, huge redwoods. Yeah, people have been chased out of there for climbing and been threatened with arrest. So that's an area where you have to be very careful. Well, um, I, I won't mention any names, but I've been taken, uh, I've been taken to the top of a redwood uh, somewhere near Alpine Lake and all of that. Oh, I agree. Nice. So are there any other questions at the moment? I, I wonder if Harv maybe can share some of the videos or the extra material he does have. Because he's such a <laughs> fast speaker. Maybe he can share some more material. I know he's listening. He's looking. Also, uh, Grieta, we could have uh, some of the people that uh, we're not here yesterday, introduce themselves and we can learn a little yes. bit more about everybody. Yes, definitely, yeah. I mean, we still have 20 minutes, so yeah, that would have been kind of my uh, second point. So yeah, let's do that. And in the meantime, Harv can kind of like figure out, oh, he's already showing us something. This will go fast. Yeah, this is just a quick, uh, this was a local, um, well, let's see which one, which one we should show here. Um, well, let's do this one since we're talking about this was shown on the, on the Hallmark channel. Oh, so here's a, a nice tree we can climb. That is this a, is, how tall is that tree? Oh, I'd say it's about 85 feet tall. The trees can be very old and very ancient. And they have a, a character to them that human beings have always wanted to uh, tap into. Let's say hi to Grabs. <laughs> Seems like a sturdy, sturdy old guy. Sturdy, sturdy tree. Climbing trees allows us to get closer to trees and to know trees a little bit better than we could from that that ground level. Are you all set to climb? Yep. Well, let's go. Well, everybody is, has tree climbing stories. When I tell people that I climb trees and I take people up and I train people, they say, "Oh yeah, I used to climb as a kid. I used to do. I used to love doing that. I used to climb and climb." But nobody ever says talks about when they stopped climbing and why they stopped climbing. Want to go a little higher? Sure. You guys are ever going to get me out of here. <laughs> That's okay. I think we undervalue trees and forests, not just for all the ecological services they they provide, but just what how special they are as as living organisms and how much they need to be cared for and supported. So when you bring people up in the trees and you tell people what the tree's name is, they can't go on with, with their lives without thinking about trees. And when I get to take other people up, especially for the first time, it strikes them. They get up there and it just hits them that this is something different. This is something more than just an exercise. This is something that hits them deeply. And for me to participate in that and to share that and see people uh, connect with that sort of joy is, is a pleasure to me. I don't know how to explain it. How do you explain it? It's uh, unbelievable. Life, that's what you feel up here. What I enjoy doing is just going up and hanging out and being there. You feel the pull, the pull back towards your responsibilities, uh, but you can push it aside because once you're up in a tree, you're on tree time. And tree time is a little different time than it is on the ground. Uh, you're in a different space, and if you climb higher and higher, you start getting a little more perspective on where your life is and where it should be. I like to see us as neither the saviors nor the, the destroyers of nature. I like to see us as an embedded part of nature. We can either be harmful or helpful, depending on how we how we relate uh, to the environment. So it's not a question of 
getting back to nature or putting ourselves in nature. It's just a question of being, being in nature. And that's all we have to do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that was. I think I never saw that video, and I forgot about tree time. So that's yeah. a good way to describe it that you're in a different time. And obviously, that was that was a little while ago. That yes. was uh, <laughs> that was 15 years ago. You should share so. that on our YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 15 years ago. So, you know, I'm a little younger and I'm using uh, fairly basic uh, technique techniques in that time, but it's still still great. Still great. So I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah, I enjoyed it. All right. So um, are there any questions so far? Not we can introduce and meet the new folks um, or the new folks, <laughs> the people that weren't here yesterday, I guess. Um, so that would be everyone, almost everyone, except for myself, Vicky, Nadia, and Eric, and Richard. And Ellie was here, of course, yeah. So let's, let's start with Paul. Oh, uh, hello. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Paul, and uh, I've been tree climbing for a while, since about 2000 or so, uh, in various guises. I now live in England and, and tree climb on a little island off the south coast called the Isle of Wight. Um, and I take people tree climbing for a living here. That's what I do. Um, yeah, that's me. So is tree climbing a big part of, uh, of England in general or in your corner of England? Or is it just you? Just, well, I, I don't know really. Um, there's a little bit going on in England, but we're a bit cut off from the rest of the world here on the Isle of Wight. So um, I'm not sure. I, I, I hear of people climbing and I'm sure they do it, um, but I don't know much about it. Okay. All right. Um, thanks. Yeah. I always I always want to go to that island because I cannot picture it. Um, anyways, let's ask, let's see, Francisco? Can you hear us? Do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Uh, hello, uh, I am Francisco. Uh, I am not uh, a good speaker in English, but I will try it. So I am from Ecuador. I am a biologist. Nowadays, I am living here in Sao Paulo. Uh, I am a tree climber. Uh, I work with different projects in the conservation and monitoring species in the canopy in the tropical forests uh, in Ecuador and uh, in Brazil. So I was uh, uh, know about the big canopy camp out in the last year that it was my first time uh, participating of this event. Uh, now is my second time. So is that uh, I am organizing some people for doing this uh, adventure in the trees. So is that it's difficult to find different tree climbers for doing this activity in the South America. But yes, my my goal is to reach these people to find these people and organize a, a crew for doing this activity here in Brazil. I have some friends in Ecuador that so is trying to organize for doing this event in this weekend. Yeah, nice. is that? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Your, your English is perfect. <laughs> Don't worry about it at all. Um, yeah, so I... <laughs> no, <laughs> should, I am trying. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really good. It's really good, seriously. Um, so I actually know a bunch of people in Argentina and actually also in Brazil. So we should connect and I can give you some names and introduce you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was in signing in the, in, in the page of the big canopy camp out. So I found uh, maybe three 
persons in the South America. So two persons in Ecuador I, uh, and, and I in Brazil. So I don't know more people, but if you tell me if more people doing the same, yes, yes. It's, it's good to have these important people doing the same in South America. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I know some, and some of them might actually be in Sao Paulo at the moment. Is that where you are now? Yeah. So, definitely, we can connect you with more people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I am to kind of thing. Uh, yeah, some people are in the chats. So, yeah, Eric mm -hmm. also knows a bunch of people in South America. Mostly people he uh, trained, I think. So, yeah. So, we will connect you. We will get you in touch with people. All right, um, let's go to Joyce and, and JJ. I don't know if you are in the same spot or you know each other, right? I also don't know how to pronounce your names. Well, Joyce, yes, but not your actual name. Oh. You're muted. Yeah, Cut it. Okay, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, yeah. Uh, we work together in Korea, and then um, actually, uh, when I was in graduate school, student maybe six years ago, uh, my major was uh, uh, forest healing for uh, human, like uh, John Gesserit in Japan. At that time, I know about uh, tree climbing and. Uh, I learned about tree climbing to Korean arborist. And then three years ago, I visited uh, America with my friends, including Joyce. Uh, we, learned, uh, we learned about tree climbing facilitator and instructor to build uh, Kentucky. Is it right, Joyce? Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then, mm, uh, yeah, nice, nice to meet you. And then, oh, uh, if I, I have a chance, then I want to show a short video about yes. veggie course in Korea. It's just, uh, it's not, uh, it's uh, just fun. Yeah. Yeah, I can make you a co-host. So just did that. Oh, and yeah. then, so then you can share your screen. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. The best way to do, like, if you share screen, you can click at the bottom to optimize for video, uh, and then it will go a little bit better. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, now you mean? Okay, I see. Team uh, you mean? Okay. One day. Wait a minute, please. Okay, uh, I'm ready and then um, can yeah. you show this? Uh, first? Okay, yes, perfect. Uh, I will start. <laughs> Sound is hello. Oh, good. 소리를 어떻게 하면 나올 수 있나? 오. sound is not working. Oh, sorry. There is no sound. Oh. How can I? Um sound problem. Let when you mm. Yeah, so when you go to more, I don't know. Yeah, I don't it's okay, hard for me to see. Yeah. Ah. Sometimes in the upper left, there's yeah, options I, for sound. Yeah. Uh, I found solution. Yeah, because you know. yeah, I restart. Perfect.
Okay, thank you for watching. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you guys have such nice promotional materials. Like, do you have like a uh, like a professional like photographer, videographer on your team? Oh, very nice. Yes. Yeah, it's very nice. Yes, we we pay for that. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. Like uh, you, well, also yeah, your this, websites. Yeah, this video is sponsored by. Uh, government, uh, community government sponsored this video yeah, for our uh, company. Right. Yeah. yeah, very nice, very nice. So what kind of trees do you guys climb? Mm -hmm. What tree species? Ah, uh, this is, uh, this tree species, uh, uh, how can uh, I say? So cool. Oku tree, yeah. Uh, Oak tree, yeah. We have a many pine tree, but we don't climb because of raisin. And we have a many oak tree, and uh, uh, so koba tree. Do you know? So koba. No. Mm. So, uh, What's that? <laughs> I don't know the proper yeah. English name. Yeah. Zel uh, Zelkova with a Z. It's yeah, related, Z. It's related to Z. Mm. So, are you guys the first people climbing in your country? Tree climbing? Not first, uh, because uh, as I said, it's six years ago, Korean arborist, uh, 10 years ago uh, in Korea, uh, some arborist. Uh, uh, introduce tree climbing, but there are not many people in, in Korea. Right. So I have the feeling, yeah, you guys are kind of like the main people in South uh, Korea, right? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. In Korea, tree climbing field is not big. Yeah. Right. But maybe I think so. Um, there are mm, 20 or 30 uh, people in Korea as a climber, Altish climber, yeah. Nice, yeah. Yeah, you yes. guys are- We train them. <laughs> right, so you, you, are, you are personally responsible for all new tree climbers in South Korea, basically. Yeah, yeah. You, are, you are creating the community. That's very nice. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Let's see if the Russian team, I don't know if they want to say something. They were introduced by Fiki a little bit yesterday. And then Adam, but Adam is going to talk. So he's the next speaker. So I have the feeling he's going to introduce him again, you know, in like 10 minutes. Um, so we can skip Adam for now for that reason. Sorry. Yeah. So who else wants to introduce himself? Or does anyone want to introduce themselves again? Nobody? Ellie, perhaps. I'll, yeah, I'll reintroduce myself. I was on here yesterday, but there was only uh, several of us. Uh, my name is Allie. I just recently started climbing just a few months ago, uh, but it's my life's passion. So I'm pouring myself into it. Um, I moved from Austin to Portland to tree climb, actually, with Tim Kovar of Tree Climbing Planet. And within the next couple of weeks, I am starting a position as a groundsman slash tree climbing trainee um, to learn some skills. I uh, recently took a facilitator's course as well. Um, so I've been taught how to bring people up into trees and eventually want to go away from tree production work and more into inspirational and recreational tree climbing to help people connect with nature. Very nice, yes. And so I, I'm just gonna ask this again. Where did you first start tree climbing? Well, <laughs> um, my first ever tree climb actually, I was, it was in 2017, I was on like first tree climb as in, you know, ropes and saddles and all that. Mm -hmm. um, right. I was on a road trip and I was in, I think it was South Carolina, could have been North Carolina. I was looking up 
just events that were going on during the weekend that I was going to be there. And I saw a tree climbing competition. And at the time I had no idea those things existed. I didn't right. know what that was, but I knew I loved trees. So I attended and oh my gosh, to meet a bunch of people who had a love of trees as great as my own and to see them kind of monkeying around maneuvering so smoothly in the treetops. It was just awe inspiring. And they actually had a facilitated climb set up there mostly for, you know, intended for kids, but I'm eagerly standing in line, like waiting to <laughs> climb. <laughs> um, so that was actually my first rope and saddle experience. Uh, but whenever I saw you in Panama, I went to iTech and did a rainforest canopy ecology course at the time, thinking that I was going to study rainforest canopy ecology, go into academia. Um, and I realized that I just want to fill my time with more climbing and less writing. I uh, would love to potentially, you know, climb trees for the researchers <laughs> as opposed to conducting the research on my own. Uh, right. So that was a valuable experience for me. Nice. So, yeah. So um, Adam is also was also trained at iTech. Oh, cool. Anyway, so you guys have something in common. That's a nice yeah. connection. Yeah. Um, or at least, yeah. So anyone else, we can take a little break or if there are more questions, we have some times, maybe Vicky can say a few words because she's from the BCC. Yeah, think so. sure. She always has uh, something to say. Always, always got something to say. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, really lovely to see new faces tonight. Um, as Griet said, I'm one of the co-founders and one of the primary organizers for Big Canopy Camp Out, um, which is really kicking off um, uh, at, at the moment, actually. Uh, people are packing their vans and packing their sleeping bags and tents and uh, getting ready to head out for a weekend of spending spending it in, under, um, and around trees. So, yeah, this is just such a wonderful way to get into the spirit of that whole weekend. And it is the big camp, camp like the GOTC is meant for connecting people around the world. Um, and we focus on this this one event every, every year. Um, and But it, although it encourages everyone from every corner of the world to take to their local forests and share, it's so lovely to actually kind of virtually, not physically, but to connect in this kind of way and have these chats live with people um, rather than kind of do everything a little bit more isolated and then share online. So um, yeah, I think it's I think it's great. So it's wonderful that you're all here and I'm really looking forward to the next chats. But if anyone has any questions about BCC, then um, yeah, do just ask away. So. I always have questions. So one, I want to know how many countries are now participating? Because it keeps going up. 20, how 36. many? 36. 36. 36. Nice. 36. Yep, and we've got 190 registered events. Nice. And then I, I want to ask you, how, how did this start? How did you come up with this idea many, many years ago? Yeah. Um, so I worked with um, two others. So I come from a zoological background, but like Ali, I love being out in the forest and um, the physical side and the practical side of, of field work. But when it came to kind of sitting in a lab, I realized that that was really not great for me. Um, so I didn't go down the academic route, but um, uh, I loved working with scientists and researchers and being in these in areas for conservation. My but when I was not doing that, I was at home as an industrial uh, climber and tree climber. And I met other interesting individuals, two of which, one was a medic and went out on expeditions and climbed trees as a, as a doctor. The other was in film and media. So he did a lot of filming for the BBC Natural History Unit and did a lot with film crew. And collectively, we worked off and on together on different projects for several years. Um, in that many years, about 10 years. Um, and over that time, the three of us were just so humbled and so in awe of everyone that we'd met collectively and individually on these trips in all these different countries. And we realized as the state of the world got a little bit worse, um, that there were so many people doing so many wonderful things around the world that the other wonderful people didn't know about because it didn't 
get into mainstream media or um, social media was kicking off, but maybe not in that, you know, the, the connections weren't quite there. And we thought, well, wouldn't it be wonderful to get them all together? And we eventually, we thought we could do a conference. And then we realized very quickly that that was not available to a lot of the people that we'd worked with um, for various financial, physical, logistical reasons. And we thought, well, that's not fair. Um, so how about we do something online? And that's that's how it that's how it kicked off. And we thought, well, let's do something good while we try and connect everyone. Everyone goes and sleeps in a tree because that was our favorite thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever we were whatever job we were on, we would just always sneak off and try and sleep in a tree. Um, and it, everyone loved it. Uh, so we're like, okay, we'll just get everyone to do that. And why don't we just collect some money and do a bit of fundraising and give it to a good cause at the time? Um, and since then, it's just um, kind of evolved and, and developed. And the more people that we get, that we meet, the more people we can put in touch with other people. And then suddenly these incredible allegiances and um, new inspirational projects pop up. And we're exactly like what um, the, was it David? Um, or the gentleman before was saying, it is the community. We're very very special group of people and um, take it from someone that worked in industrial climbing for 10 years tree climbers are very special in a lovely way <laughs> um, they see the world in a different way and what is what is a, a beautiful thing is to be able to share that with different people for all different reasons photography art science yeah. recreational health you know, a competition, arboreal culture. There's so much and everyone can put their own little creative and personal spin on, on it as well, which is such a beautiful thing. Um, so yeah, we just hope to keep connecting more and more people and yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, I mean, yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, it was a really good idea. It's very successful yeah. and like you're definitely like connecting a lot of people. So yeah, it's amazing that you came up with that. Um, okay, I suggest we take a five minute break. Uh, more or less, we're a little bit behind schedule. I'm sure Adam is okay with that. Check. He's like, hmm. <laughs> okay, he's okay with it. So let's take a little five minute break so you guys can get your coffee or tea, or beer, um, and then we'll, we'll meet again here. Thank you, Har, thank you for your talk. See you, uh... You're welcome, thank you, everyone. If you're ever in Colorado, look me up, we'll go for a climb. Okay, let's do that on Sunday. <laughs>